And welcome to KLYC Town Hall. We are broadcasting live and video streaming live on uh, KLYC AM 1260. We do town halls uh, on, an, on a fairly regular basis, but listen for promos when we tell you what the topic is and uh, when the date and time is. Typically, town halls are going to be 5 to 6 p.m. to allow you to listen to it on the way home from work. And we're going to be talking about issues affecting Yamhill, Polk, and Marion counties. Tonight, we're going to be talking about what's going on with Habitat for Humanity. And with us is Mary Stern, the director. Hi. Hi, how are you? I am great. How are you tonight? And Steve Long is the director of the Restore? Uh, Manager, yes. Manager of the Restore. Okay, well, welcome to KLYC Video. If you're listening to the radio and you want to watch it, you can go online to our website, klyc.us, our Facebook page, KLYC Radio. But not while you're driving. No, not while you're driving. Please don't do it while you're driving. While you're driving, listen to the radio. Uh, but we will have a podcast up of this later on, and then we'll also be looking at some pictures here in a minute, which is kind of hard to do on the radio. But uh, we will definitely do that on, on the video. If you missed the live video stream, we'll have it up later, and you can watch it at no charge. And that's all of the town halls we do will be live video streamed and live broadcast on the radio. So let's talk about Habitat for Humanity. How many people have we put in homes in this effort? Here? Oh, geez, 57 families. I'm not sure the exact count because that has changed. You know, some kids move out, some children are born since the families move in. So, but 57 families have had homes in the McMinnville and surrounding areas. And what kind of time frame? That's since 1991. Now, there is a tremendous pressure. If you go to a city council meeting, you talk to a young couple trying to find a home in McMinnville. Newburgh or any place, it is hard. They're really, the local realtors say there's virtually no affordable housing. You know, if you, if you're a low income person or even middle middle to low income person, it's very very difficult to find housing. So Habitat for Humanity steps in, and what exactly do you do? What are the criteria, and who do you put into homes? Okay, well, our families, there are three criteria that they must meet. First, they have to have a need for housing, better housing, uh, safer housing, more affordable housing. Uh, They also must have the ability to pay a mortgage that we will hold, a zero-interest mortgage, for 30 years, um, but they have to have the ability to pay the mortgage and um, their property taxes and their homeowners insurance and homeowners association with the the development we're building now there is a homeowners association so that total housing cost can be no more than 30 percent of their income and then they also have to be willing to partner with us by investing sweat equity our families help build their own houses it's uh, if it's a single parent it's 250 hours if it's a couple then it's 500 hours of sweat equity must be invested in the home and also they have to take home ownership courses to learn about financing and maintaining their home and things like that you probably have a long list of people wanting homes because there's a lot of people out there that want a home. It's we get calls every day, and even people stopping in the restore, you know, wanting you know information about how do I get a home, how do I get a home, and um, frankly, we accept applications at any time. But the problem with that is if you apply. We have to accept your application, but because we have no houses available at the time, we would have to deny it. So lots of times people will say, well, just put my name on a list and contact me when you're going to have some homes available. So last spring, we went through the selection process, and we held orientation classes, four of them, two in English, two in Spanish, all around the county, and got information out to all of our communities, all the surrounding communities, and people came to these meetings and learned about what it would take to apply and what the criteria were and we actually did it with um, folks from community home builders as well because sometimes people won't qualify for our programs but they may qualify for community home builder programs so you know everybody's looking for an affordable house so they all got to come to one place to learn about that and um, as a result of that we did five home visits of all the applications we received and selected three families. And again, the, it's based on the need, the ability to pay, and then their willingness to partner. How much are you selling a home for when the, when the family, you would select a family, typically what is their, how much do they pay? Well, um, 
what we've been doing is we are trying to get the first mortgage to cover the cost, what it costs for us to build the home, the lot, and the infrastructure. So the last house that we dedicated in September, the mortgage was for $165,000. Now, if you can find a four-bedroom, two-bathroom home with a fenced backyard and a garage uh, next to a future little park, uh, you tell me where that is and people will be running there. But So that's the first mortgage. And as I said, zero interest, 30 years is the, the norm. And then we hold a second mortgage as well, a silent second. So that last house for 165000 that was appraised at 268000 So we have a second, a silent second mortgage for that $103,000 difference um, because we don't want our families to flip their houses and then, you know, and then take off and sell it to anyone. We want to make sure these homes stay with uh, low-income families and that they're affordable housing. So um, that silent second sits there. Nobody... The family does not have to pay on it. After 10 years, it decreases by 5% every year. So that at the end of 30 years, the family has paid off their first mortgage and that second mortgage is gone. If during the, you know, the time of ownership, they want, to, um, they want to move or they need to move, this has happened before, where we hold the first and second mortgage, we then get the right of first refusal. So we can, we can buy at fair market value, the property back, and then work with another family to put them in, another low-income family to put them into the home. Boy, there, there's a, there, would you, if, we, if we had a home that we were selling on the radio tonight, there would be a line. Oh, no kidding. To Newburgh. No for kidding. Right. Right. Even for the 268 to get a, you know, a, a really brand new home that's built with love, uh, and very, we have some very skilled folks who are out there building and lots of volunteers who learn some great skills while they're out there. So let's talk about a couple of the programs. There's a veteran's build oh, there is. underway. Yes. Uh, that's, I've heard that. Yes. And there's also the housing development, which just happens to be right next door to the American Legion Post 21. That's right. So let's talk about the vets build first. What's sure. going on there? Well, um, so veterans build, Habitat International started this program, the veterans build program. I believe it was in 1991, around the same time we came into being. But, and it, it, it's as a way to engage returning veterans into the community and part of that and it really helps with their transition back into society and they had done studies where they interviewed vets and said do you you know do you want to be engaged in community service how many of you have been asked and I think the numbers were like 90 percent had never been asked if they wanted to be involved so we're doing the asking we're asking veterans our local veterans to get involved with us and to try and you know help us build this home and we we're fortunate enough that one of our three families we selected actually it was the end of June by the time we selected them is a veteran and uh, that's the Floyd family Ed Floyd uh, as a U.S. Army veteran, he served for almost seven years um, overseas. He spent most of that time serving um, in Korea and UAE, and he was in Bahrain. He's been, you know, he's been all over the place, and he missed being with his family. He missed out on a lot of opportunities. He missed out on his uh, daughter's birth. So he has a son who is 11, um, and then two daughters, five and three. And um, so when he missed the birth of Juliet, his oldest daughter, he decided he didn't want to be away from his family anymore. So he moved back to McMinnville. And really, it was in two th end of 2012 and really struggled to find work during that time. It was a difficult time. He finally got a job with uh, Spirit Mountain um, at the casino. He's on floor security, but shortly thereafter he was promoted to a floor manager and I'll tell you they love him out there he's a fabulous employee and they want to do all they can to help and his buddies that he works with there want to come out and join him on the job site so so are we it's building great. the vets home now? Yes, we are. We okay. started on November 4th. We had the kick out off, right. although the, we started putting the framing up. The foundation was poured before that, and, uh, but we had Ed and his wife, Elizabeth. Uh, they were out there. Elizabeth brought the kids. Well, when we look at the pictures, I'll show you a beautiful picture of Juliet and Isabella with their hard hats on out there, and it is so adorable. And um, so... It's been terrific. We have a committee, a wonderful committee, a Veterans Build Committee. Um, 
with some veterans and some veteran supporters on there. Uh, County Commissioner Stan Premisich is one of our co-chairs. Nathan Bacala, a great young guy from uh, that works out of Carleton. He and lives in McMinnville. He's the other co-chair. Uh, County Commissioner uh, Rick Olson, a veteran himself, as well as Commissioner Permisage, uh, there on the committee. Angel Mendoza, our wonderful local veteran who uh, spearheaded the um, parade on Veterans Day. Gail Sears, the commander from the Legion Post. Um, trying to think. Sammy Farmer lives in, I believe Sammy, I hope I get this right, lives in Carleton. And... Um, some other folks who, oh, Nikki uh, Volz, who works with Northwest Seniors and Disabled Services. Um, she had been doing some work with veterans for them, and that program's no longer there, but she's staying on our committee to help us. And so it's really, it's a terrific group of people who want to do right by our veterans, and it's it's just really exciting. We've had some fundraisers. We were in the parade. We um, the, the county actually gave us ten thousand uh, dollars to help towards the veterans build oregon association of realtors gave us um, five thousand dollars and then the local realtors chipped in some more we've had uh, just great support u.s bank we understand i'm not sure the amount yet but somewhere in the eight thousand dollar range just will be awarding us a grant for the veterans build so that's it's, great it really is it's so exciting yeah. lots of we have a couple local businesses we we're reaching out to businesses who want to support us and they can be at different levels if they want to give us ten thousand we'll call them a major general and give them all sorts of perks with that um, down to two hundred and fifty dollars for a lieutenant and we have a uh, a few businesses who have chipped in at that level so far and we recognize them on our web page and on our facebook page and so it's just you know it's been great grocery outlet um, for the first two weeks in November, they did a roundup so people could, you know, whatever change they got, they can throw in the jar at the end of the checkout aisle. And uh, we picked up a very heavy bucket uh, with $256.13 in two weeks. People just throwing their change in there at Grocery Outlet. And it's, you know, it's fabulous. Everybody, everybody wants to get together and support our veteran. And when you meet this family, they are just so fabulous and so grateful for this opportunity. It's just, it's really, it's really um, heartwarming. Yes, it is. When is the, when is the home going to be finished? Well, that's always a good question. <laughs> <laughs> depending on funds and weather and you know everything that happens but we estimate it'll probably be ready in may is uh, what we're thinking so there would be a dedication it usually takes six to seven months from the time we uh, start can you tell us where the home is is it part of the subdivision out by the legion oh home? sure that's okay. now that's where we're building that uh subdivision across right across atlantic street from the american legion uh, will home will be home to 34 um, Mac Habitat families when it's all done. So currently, we had just been building along the periphery. So we built eight houses along uh, along Tilbury and Atlantic Streets, and Turner Way, named after Bernie Turner, our founder here at Mac Habitat, who we all know and love. Um, that will be the internal street for the subdivision. And the three families that we just selected, their homes will be built on Turner Way. So let's talk about the subdivision now. Mm -hmm. uh, what's going on there? You mentioned eight homes have been built. Mm -hmm. We've seen activity going on out there, uh, rain or shine. And every once in a while, we'll drive by in the AM van, the always mobile van, looking for news oh. going on in the, in the valley. <laughs> How do you get a plug in there? Okay. And we'll stop and interview them. Oh, awesome. And Yay. There was... Uh, I think there was a dance team from Mac High that was out there. Out there one that. day. Uh, oh, yeah. When we yeah. had the dedication that day or another day. Another day. Another day. They we were out there building. We've had, right, there's a high school, uh, Linfield College groups. We have businesses who go out there, bring groups out. Dutch Brothers this summer. We had the three different stores in, Dutch, for, in McMinnville sent a uh, Three consecutive Saturdays sent a group out from each of the stores to build out there. It was so, just so wonderful, really exciting. The community really likes to get involved and feel like they're a part of it, and they are. We couldn't do it without our community volunteers. It takes a village to build a house. It does. You know what? It really does. Think about it. Now, eight homes have been built out there. How many are plotted for that subdivision? 34 in total. 
And how long is it going to take to build that out? Um, let's guess. Um, that's, that's good. <laughs> well, we finished, We figure now it will probably be doing three a year. So if we do the three families, we finish those in 2018, right? Um, we will, that will leave us with 34 minus 11, 23 houses and three a year. So another seven or eight years after that. So What's that, 2025, or somewhere around there? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, if you're listening to the radio, I'm going to run over by the camera, and we're going to look at some <laughs> pictures. You won't be able to see them unless you look really closely at your radio dial. Right, Just right. Kidding. We'll but describe them to you. We'll, very, very nice family. <laughs> but if you're watching online, klyc.us, the website, KLYC Radio on Facebook. By the way, also, we're, we're teaming up as a success partner with Yamhill County Live, and the the links to any of the live broadcasts, live news broadcasts, or uh, spot news that we do is also going to be available on the Yamhill County Live website as well. In fact, this show tonight, uh, the link has been provided to them. And so you'll start seeing KLYC news content and special event programming like this at the Yamhill County Live site. So we're pretty excited about that partnership there. So let's take a look at a picture here. We're gonna, I'm going to run over here, and we'll run the camera. Okay. Excuse us while we while we get in place. Look, Steve, you've never looked so good. He has the poster up in front of his face here. <laughs> okay, we're looking at the family up on top. Who the family they? up on top. So you'll see Ed is the dad. Oh, there's a little glare on him. Is yes, it? Is. Go All and right. Tilt that a little bit. There you. Let's see here. There, there he go. goes. So there's Ed and Elizabeth, his gorgeous wife. Look, she looks like a model. And then there's Bruce, their oldest son, who's 11. And then Juliet right here who is five and then isabella look at that face isabella uh, is three and they are so adorable they're such a, you know such a wonderful family they're currently living in a tiny two-bedroom apartment that is so cramped um, bruce has his own room is, uh, elizabeth and the girls have to share the master bedroom and ed's working nights so when he comes home he goes into bruce's room and you know they have uh, the shades and cur curtains over the windows so it's always dark in there and the kids you know the parents worry about their kids just having a normal childhood and being able to run around and play and uh, so they are just so excited to have the opportunity for a four bedroom home where each of them will have their own rooms well not the parents they're going to have to share and yeah. Um, yeah it's just and their house is being built right next to the future park at the subdivision yeah, by yeah. Um, Lenin, yeah we'll Lenin talk Street. about that too so let's we're looking right now at the little picture of the two girl, girls with the hard hats on. oh aren't they so adorable adorable so there's Juliet, the taller one the older one and then isabella with a smile on her face in that one uh, they went out to the site during the kickoff on november 4th and they were in the construction trailer there with their hard hats on and they wanted to help their their dad but yeah <laughs> Let's swing to the to my right, your left. Okay. Uh, we're looking at some people working on looks like flooring. Yeah, they were putting the flooring there on the kickoff day, and that's uh, Commissioner Primazich right there, and then Cliff Probasco in the back, one of our longest-serving construction volunteers. Okay. And uh, Cliff was a former fire marshal in McMinnville for many years. And then there's Ed working. Uh, Ed Floyd, our veteran, working out there. And uh, they, he actually, I'll tell you, has been out. They're, they're out on the construction site every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And Ed has been out there, comes straight from work, goes out there. Elizabeth comes and meets him, and they'll work for a few hours every chance they get to be out there. It's really wonderful. And let's go down to the bottom here. The bottom, and it looks like there's Commissioner Primazich still, and Cliff again. I think that's, oh, there's Jerry Koshal in the background, and then there's Ed hammering away. Okay, so that's that's uh, some of the pictures. Now, if you, we're going to swing around here, and we're, if you go, ahead, right, you put that down. go ahead and put that down. We want to see <laughs> And we want to see you. Well. So, Steve, we're gonna, I'm going to be by here, the camera. We're going to swing around here, and we're going to show some of the furniture at the Habitat Restore. Tell me about the Restore. Um, Restores are such an interesting institution. We're under the umbrella of the affiliate, so of course this is the McMinnville affiliate. And Restores really uh, operate only in support of the affiliate. So we take in donated items, uh, sell those to the, the community, 
and the money then goes to, uh, in, in our case, uh, cover the overhead of the affiliate so that grants and donations and, and the fundraisers can go to what we're really here for, which is to build the homes. Now, there's some nice furniture here. You know, uh, it's interesting that the things that we get, uh, <laughs> we got a criticism, I guess it was a criticism, on uh, Yelp one time, and somebody said, oh, they only have uh, uh, grandma furniture. And certainly, we get donations of, of things that are older. <laughs> but the surprising, and, and, and it's not that, that, uh, that there's anything wrong with that, because uh, it's a matter of taste in a lot of cases, but also it makes these things affordable. And so if you're a kid at Linfield and need a couch, uh, you just can't do better than to come to the ReStore. But I was going to say it's interesting also that we'll get items that I think are, are shockingly high quality. Uh, maybe they're really vintage, maybe they're real antiques, or maybe they're really new. And uh, Mary, I'm thinking about that uh, beautiful uh, upholstered uh, seat that we got, or a uh, chair. Oh, and yes. It yes. was, it was uh, it, the, the donor had had it on just a few months. She bought it because her other piece of furniture was being reupholstered and wanted something in the meantime. So she uh, bought this thing, put it in their house, I think didn't sit on it. And uh, yeah. when they got their reupholstered original piece back, just gave us the new one. So that would be an example of a, uh, not something vintage. And he remembers that chair because... I was going to buy the chair. Oh, I loved it. It was yeah. so gorgeous. It was so modern, uh, but just a beautiful chair. It would have fit perfectly in my bedroom. They uh, put the pink ribbon around it. I went up to get my wallet, came down, and there was a, a mother and daughter leaving the ReStore, and they said, oh, it's sold. And I said, what? Do you want it? Ah, oh, you can have it. I... <laughs> so they, they ended up getting the chair, and I hope they love it. You <laughs> gave it up for the cause. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yep. So what we're doing is we're panning with the camera. If you're listening to the radio and you can't get to the uh, – later on tonight, go to the website and check it out. We've panned and taken a look at some of the furniture there is here in the ReStore. And um, before you run down – you know, we hate to say that because some of these people are sponsors. But before you run down and buy a new, take a look at repurposed, repurposed furniture. Some lamps here are nice. Couches that they're sitting on right now is here for sale in the ReStore. Rocking chair that I was sitting on is for sale. Sure. So uh, take a look at some of those items, and you're also helping to support the Habitat Build projects. Right, it, Dave. That's that's uh, for sure. And the other thing that we wanted to mention is um, this is, I guess, by definition, a brick and mortar establishment, and we are kind of running into what uh, the, the general retail atmosphere, and that is that we find people are shopping online as well as uh, going into the store. And we don't want to miss that opportunity. So we've really sort of developed uh, a, a fairly strong eBay presence. And what I want to let people know sure. is that we'll now take things we wouldn't have taken in the past, uh, but now we have a different outlet. So things that maybe wouldn't be appropriate for the store, we can take anyway um, because we have a, a way to, to get it to that person in New York who's just dying to have grandma's china. Um, Mary, one of my favorite uh, stories was about uh, an old pair of tennis shoes that I would have passed over, but uh, we have people that know the value of some of these things, and I think we got, what, $180 for... Uh, original Nike? Uh, no, 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 they were Adidas. Adidas. Yeah. Uh, uh. So it's just fun. Uh, if people uh, want to uh, take advantage of this last opportunity of this year to make a donation and, and get that uh, tax write-off. Uh, give us a try. Yeah. And bring, bring the thing down. Let us evaluate uh, if it's appropriate for either the store or, f or for, to put it online. Now, I have a funny eBay story that I've been dying to share because we finally got the permission of the people involved. So let me uh, look at it out here so people can see. Can see so, you when you tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> now, this isn't a Habitat story. This is just kind of a funny eBay story. Uh, we have, and I, I've been given the approval by the person. This is a funny story. Okay. Trust me. You'll like it. <laughs> um, local auto dealership, Christensen Auto Sales. Sure. Mm -hmm. They had a Cobra Mustang. Now, okay. Okay, a hot rod. 
All right. And so it was on the lot for a while. And uh, so we pushed it on the air. And uh, they put it on eBay. Oh. And they sold it. A guy in the Midwest wanted it. And so we went on the air and said, we don't want to sell this Cobra to somebody in the Midwest. We want to keep it in McMinnville. Yeah, go McMinnville, go McMinnville. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. So we went on the air and pushed it. <clears throat> and a 92-year-old lady and her 72-year-old daughter came in and bought that Cobra. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. <laughs> so way to go, Mac. Yay. Yeah. There's a, there's a 92-year-old lady out there driving around in a Cobra Mustang. Wow. Little old lady from McMinnville. Yeah. 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 I don't know how many speeding tickets she's got, but huh. so that was my funny eBay story for that. Yeah. Day. Oh, that's terrific. In fact, uh, we actually recently sold uh, a, a pretty special stereo uh, unit. Uh, it had a separate speaker cabinet and then a, uh, the other uh, component cabinet, and to somebody in Illinois. Mm -hmm. So, really? Yeah. This is again. It's the it's casting a wider net. It's it it's a, just a fun way to reevaluate some of the things that we get in here right yeah and a lot of businesses are looking at the the out-of-market purchaser and yes. uh, you know they're selling cars sure. yeah. and and davidos and so on and so forth there might be somebody in minnesota that might want this couch oh, oh let's hope and so <laughs> just this couch because it's been set on it's and it's so been so comfortable it's a well, famous couch now <laughs> Is that, that's called what the provenance? The provenance of this couch is Mary Stern sat on it. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> and and she'll even sign something for you. Yeah, that's right. A little thank you note yeah. with an XO on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything more about Restore? Just a, a couple of things. We feel like uh, I, I talked about our main function really is to raise revenue for the, the affiliate. But we do some other things too. And one of those is we keep items out of the landfill. And the numbers are, and, and you know, they, they vary obviously year to year, but we keep about uh, 600 tons, this store, uh, of items out of the landfill. So there are roughly 850 restores, and we're average. So do that math. 600 tons times 850 restores, uh, we're doing some good there. The other thing that we can do well, two other things. <clears throat> we provide items to uh, folks locally who maybe either couldn't have something or they're just uh, frugal shoppers. Uh, maybe they repurpose something. And I'm thinking of, uh, we had some tile in here once, and we actually donated this to Pat Middle School because they had some windows broken out. And rather than replace the windows, they had the kids make mosaics out of the tile and install those. And then the last thing is that it's really a terrific volunteer opportunity. Right. We, uh, this is, you would just figure that this is the case, but we have the most terrific volunteers. We do. Yeah, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, from varied backgrounds, uh, sometimes they're younger people just starting out, and this is a, a great way, it's a great thing to put on your resume, it's a great way to learn some skills. But then we have the other end of the spectrum, uh, people with a lot of experience who aren't really ready to kind of roll over and quit, uh, can use that experience here. Uh, sometimes it's merchandising. Sometimes it's uh, a little repair work. Uh, if we swung the camera around, you'd see some construction that we're doing. But anyway. Drywall taping. Yeah, yeah right. you bet. So uh, if, if somebody has a little extra time and you think, gee, it'd be, it'd be nice to be part of a, a terrific group, we're that group. And we're really fortunate we have a lot of couple volunteers, Sure, uh, several sets who um, the husband volunteers out at the construction site mm -hmm. and the wives volunteer either in the restore or in the office. And it's really, um, and it can go the other way. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, we do have some women who volunteer regularly out on the construction site as well. And we have male volunteers here in the restore. Sure. So it's, uh, it, and it's really a great place, Pe you know, the, People who donate, people who shop here, they're just fabulous. And the staff are just the best. Yeah. It's almost, and, and we've said this before, it's almost like the uh, TV show Cheers. Mm -hmm. We'll have <laughs> regular shoppers who come in, and it's not Norm, mm -hmm. but maybe John, mm -hmm. Billy. <laughs> and uh, really, and we love this, people come in primarily to pet the cat. I understand that. 
But uh, well, also, they do. They do. Yes. Come Habby, in. Our yeah. beautiful Habby. Habby cat. Get it. Get it. Get it. <laughs> and uh, but it's just a friendly, inviting kind of a place. Uh, one of my favorite um, anecdotes is uh, a fellow walked in the door, and I said, "Hi, uh, what are you looking for? What can we help you with?" He says, "I'm looking for what I don't need and can't live without." <laughs> and I thought, "We that's exactly what we have." You're in the right place. <laughs> and he walked out with it. Yeah. <clears throat> and the cat is interesting because the cat is, is the happy cat. It's a mm-hmm. black cat on mm-hmm. the counter. And when you first come in, the cat just is sitting there like an ornament. And then the cat starts <laughs> to move and you realize it's a live animal. Right. So it's kind of fun. We yeah. won't sell her. No, no. <laughs> She's priceless. So come in and come in and pet the cat. Yeah, everyone does. But you're, it's right. You people come in and just say, "Oh, I just want to see what's going on, see what you've got for sale." You know, again, it's it's a warm, friendly at- atmosphere. But the other thing is, it is a treasure hunt, and <laughs> uh, I'll get asked sometime, um, "Do you have fill in the blank?" Well, we don't at the moment. And then the next question is, "Well, when are you getting more?" Well, gee, either right now or never i mean <laughs> we we just don't know and that's part of the fun of it is we don't know what's coming in the door um but we're we try to be somewhat discriminating and not to have it's it's not a, a junk store so uh, a little bit upper end furniture and sometimes tools and uh, lighting fixtures building material and uh, but you don't know you don't you don't know what you're going to find but i do have to say and God bless Lowe's, they're great to us. But uh, several folks have us as the first stop on their route when they need something. And uh, because often we do have it, and we just have it at a substantial discount. So if you have something to donate, make sure you remember Habitat for Humanity. By the way, if you have a question, you can text us. We don't, we're don't. we not set up this evening to take uh, live audio phone calls. We will in the future on future programs. But if you have a question for Habitat for Humanity... Uh, you can text 503-472-1260, 503-472-1260, and it'll come up on this phone, and we'll be able to answer your questions. Oh, so, good. Call us. Call ask us. questions. Yeah. Call us and ask about uh, <laughs> how much for this couch. Does this feel like click and clack a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> my alternator's going out. Don't drive like my brother. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Please. but up bum So uh, we'll be on the air for uh, uh, a few more minutes. And uh, any closing thoughts about uh, oh, anything? Well, coming soon to the Restore, yes. we are going to have Sheriff Santa here. Uh, or Santa Sheriff, depending on what you'd like to call him. But uh, one of Santa's Santa helpers happens to be Sheriff Tim Svensson. And he's going to be here at the Restore on the December 9th. 9th. It's yeah. a Saturday from 9 to noon. And we are going to have some goodies, and the Christmas tree's already up, and Santa will be here. You can take pictures. We'll take them with our phones and email them to you, text them to you if you'd like. But just, you know, bring the family by, see what we have in the store. Come, it's always good to be friends with the sheriff. And Santa. And, and Santa. Santa, right, right. Two for one. Yeah. <laughs> so that should be fun, yeah. He gives a new meaning to uh, Better be nice. <laughs> oh, naughty or nice. Yeah. Okay, no questions yet. So, okay. Uh, again, 503-472-1260, 503-472-1260. How long has Habitat for Humanity been active here in the McMinnville area? Since 1991. I think they were um, first uh, organized in 1990, but they built and dedicated the first house in 1991. And I love the stories of Bernie Turner going around to people and, you know, he went to Harold Washington and said, Harold, I need a roof for this house. And Harold said, all right, I'll get you a bid. And he said, no, no, Harold, I need a roof for this house. So since 1991, all 57 homes, Washington Roofing has put the roof on. And even though Harold retired, uh, Eric and June Wolf has c- have continued that uh, tradition, and it's really amazing. And and uh, so many others. Gormley Plumbing has done so much for us over the years. And Grocery Outlet stocks the cabinets 
They, for every new home that's yeah. dedicated, it's incredible what they do. The fridge, the freezer, the cabinets, the pantry, the laundry, the bedrooms. They put stuff in the bed. They put a gift for each child. The First Presbyterian Church makes a blanket for every child that gets a new home. There's the Needlepoint Guild. They make an ornament, a needlepoint ornament. Uh, Morris Carpet Cleaning. They clean the windows on every house. It's just... Uh, Others, uh, what's now Roby, they have given us discounts on the flooring and the countertops for every home. It's just, you know, everybody comes together to do do the right thing. Dave's Garage Doors is a new donor who yeah. they're giving us a free garage door and do door opener. So it's just wonderful that people really want to come together and, and help the community and helping in any ways they can, like the Legion, our, our construction crew, the regular crew that's every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday, they walk across the street and eat lunch at the Legion and they love them there. They're you know, like members. So it's, it's really, it's just a terrific, a terrific way to give back to the community. And there are so many ways to do it, whether it's volunteering and don't be afraid if you don't know how to nail hammer a nail which i did not know the right way they made fun of me when i went out there first there is a right way there to is a right way yes yes and they but they taught me how to do it and uh, you can you can work out on the construction site help me in the office please you can help in the restore we always need help please. here <laughs> we you can donate goods you can donate money you can donate services but really what we're doing is building homes, community, and hope. And that's our mission. You know, we, we have a vision of this community where everyone has a safe, decent, affordable place to live. And what, you know, you think about that at Christmas time. We are now, um, last year, within the, the last calendar year, three families moved in to three homes. So there were five adults and 10 children. So those those families, those 15 people, now will be in a home for the fir their own home for the first time ever for a holiday season. That's going to make you feel good. Oh, it's oh, yeah. so and incredible. D Dave, if I can uh, tell my experience. Sure. When we moved to McMinnville, we wanted to be part of the community, and I thought uh, I was looking for ways to be involved. And somebody mentioned Habitat. It turned out, obviously, that there's an affiliate here. And I... Uh, signed up to help build homes and I think I'm reasonably handy but I learned some things and and that was terrific but uh, the camaraderie and the you know we just ha had a lot of fun and I so I had that experience and you mentioned Christmas time and you mentioned grocery outlet the next experience was uh, uh, when they turned the keys over uh -huh. oh my goodness I still get choked up um, when you uh, when you see when they open the door, there's gifts under the tree. You open the cupboards. There's food in the cupboards, food in the uh, uh, in the refrigerator, stuff in the closet. The kids have their own beds. It there's just there wasn't a dry eye. Yeah, it's there almost isn't now. <laughs> it's pretty. It's really spectacular. And I think you know for years, for the two years that I was working away from McMinnville, I just really missed the connection with this community and was so grateful to have the opportunity to come here as the executive director. And I think it was my second week on the job, we had a dedication and um, of Tracy Spurgeon's house. And Tracy worked at Harvest Fresh. I knew her from there. I saw her there all the time. She and her three children moved into this house. And it was really, I mean, it was hard, hard not to get choked up, to, to realize the change. They were, you know, living in, the grandma's trailer and with the you know all in one room all three of them in one room uh, four of them in one room and to now go to a place where they had their own bedrooms and their own space and Tracy tells the story of how they put little notes on their door saying please knock before <laughs> entering you know they they they, they had, now have space. yeah now for the first time in their lives have their own little space and it just it means the world to them and it's just it's you know really amazing to think that even if we have a little small part in that the, of of changing the the cycle uh, you know of what that the trajectory of that family and it's just it's incredible to think about that it really is and it's it's just such a wonderful a wonderful way to help the community so if you're looking for a great organization and there's many of them here in Yamhill County 
Uh, there's a lot of generous people here. Um, Habitat for Humanity has got to be top on the list. So if you're looking for a place to plug in, and even if, you, even if you're not a contractor or a home builder or a cabinet maker or a wood joiner, uh, they have something for you to do. Yeah. Uh, Dave, if we've got time. And sure we do. Oh, just a minute. Mary, um, I think there's a couple of aspects to this. One is the, this warm feeling, this emotion, and, you know, there's some practicality to that. But I think that there are people who... Uh, maybe because they don't understand, think, well, gee, these guys are getting uh, this house so cheap. I, is that really fair? Can you pull up some statistics about what does it mean to the community when somebody becomes a homeowner? Uh, well, I could pull them up if I, yeah. if I could pull them up. But I do in know, general. in general, well, I think you think about the children. And there was a, a physician who testified to Congress about the importance of home ownership who said a home is like a vaccine, that kids are much healthier when they're living in their own home. The um, graduation rates for high school increased by 25%. College graduation, 116% more likely a child is to graduate from college if their parent owned a home. Think about that. I mean, that it's, it's crazy. It's just crazy the difference that makes. The families become more engaged in the community. They're now taxpayers. They're not, you know, it's the old Habitat saying was it's a hand up, not a handout. They don't get these houses for free. They're paying a mortgage. They're paying, you know, up to 30% of their income goes towards their housing payments. And, you know, that's, that's a lot of money. And they're paying their property taxes. They are more likely to vote. They're more likely to be involved in the community once they own a home. So it's really, and I, I think about the Aspire neighborhood, our neighborhood out there. What a great name. It is the Aspire Community Development. And these folks are building, they are literally building a neighborhood and building a community together with their hands and with their sweat and their blood and their tears and not too much blood, not too much blood <laughs> Howie, if you're listening, but uh, one of our volunteers out there, but it's, it's, you know, they, they're creating this community for themselves and it's, it's just so wonderful to see and they, yet, you know, and they're, coming from places where they never never thought this would be possible and now it is because of the help of our all of our wonderful donors out yeah. there so if you want to volunteer for habitat for humanity you just come into the restore or call what's your phone number oh my goodness uh, 503-687 <laughs> well my uh, to volunteer you call emily grace 503-687-1412 that's 687-1412 Okay, Habitat for Humanity, uh, doing great work here in Yamhill County. Uh, last call, anything else? Uh, let's see, machabitat.org is our website. We have a Facebook page. Oh, and I should give a shout-out to um, for our Veterans Build, uh, the McMinnville AVA, the wineries uh, in Mc the McMinnville area. They uh, donated their proceeds from their tasting fees uh, from Veterans Day weekend, as did 12 winery in Carlton. But, um, you know, it was just I sent out this letter and they called and said, hey, we just had our meeting for our AVA and we we want to do this. And I think they raised over $1,200 just, you know, it, and it's just th so things like that. So many people just step up and say, you know, I can't do a lot, but I can do this. But everything yes. is a lot. It all adds up. It That's all adds right. Up. Right. So thank you, everybody, for your generosity. Come by the store. Come see Sheriff Santa. Come see all the great deals we have. Sheriff Santa dates again are? December 9th from 9 to 12, yeah. Saturday. Sheriff Tim Svensson will be Santa Claus. And um, hours of operation for the restore. So uh, the restore is open uh, Tuesday through Saturday. The store is open 9 to 5. Donation receiving is Tuesday and Wednesday, Friday and Saturday, 9 to 4.30. I want to be a part of it. Uh, KLYC Town Hall, we've got, uh, we've got another program coming up. We'll have to check the schedule. Uh, TVFNR, Treasure Valley, um, Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue. Sorry. I, from That's another, your Idaho roots. Yeah, <laughs> uh, oh, you've, you've been over in the Idaho. I have. Yeah, I Southwest have. Idaho. Um, I worked at a radio station over there for 20 years, and every once in a while it just kind of slips out. Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue um, has acquired Newburgh Fire yeah. uh, District, 
and the rural district there. We're going to have a show uh, off the check the calendar, and we're talking about next steps. Now, we've been talking a lot about the, the money and so on and so forth, what happens next. Well, it's going to happen now, and so we just wanted to have a show out there to say, okay, what are we going to do now? And what's it look like now as we actually uh, br brick and mortar, so to speak, and, and make this thing happen? Uh, if you have something you would like us to do a show on, um, send it to us and we'll consider it. Send it to news at klyc.us, news at klyc.us. In the future, some of these programs you will be able to call in on. We will have an eight-second delay uh, just to cover ourselves in case somebody gets too excited. And um, But we don't have that for this evening's show, but we will have that later because we want to get you involved. And we want to use the radio station and the video that we have uh, to engage the public and to talk about issues and bring you local news and information. That's one of the things you're telling us you want is local news and information. And we're doing our part to bring it on the radio, podcasts, live streaming video, and some other things. Our partnership with uh, Yamhill uh, Valley Live and uh, other things to come. So thank Yay. you for being on the show. Thank Thanks you, David. for having us. Yeah. This is fabulous. And happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> so if, if somebody from Minnesota, if you want this couch, we'll ship you the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Especially Minnesota. That's right. There you go. It's nice and warm. <laughs> it is, very much. AM 1260 KLYC. We, uh, we're going to have Chuck Berry, Run, Run, Rudolph, uh, holiday music oh. coming up. And after that here shortly, we'll have the closing stock market update, which is a little bit late tonight because of the show. But we'll have that for you coming up. So, uh, Kevin Gephardt, yes, we will have your program on shortly. Uh, thanks for being with us. AM 1260 KLYC on the street, online, on the air. Depend on us.